white people welcome to a new video and in this one i will be introducing a new term called hardware hopping in linux world is very common for users to distro hop as a user you are constantly changing your distribution in my case i have been sticking to one distribution previously it was arch linux and now void linux for almost one year but during this time i have been changing my computers with the same drives same installation i just uh, move on to a new computer with my older drives now the reason i am making this video is because for the first time i faced two unique issues at the same time one of them was the bios of the motherboard was not detecting linux drive as a bootable device which absolutely prevented me from booting into linux and once i was able to fix that issue i faced another one with the intel wireless driver the performance of this module or driver was absolutely pathetic so anyhow let's get into the details first of all i would like to brag about my hardware hopping i initially started with my little tiger it was a beefed up machine with 16 gigs of ddr3 ram gtx 1650 with 4 gb ram and then i had my ssds one for windows other one was for the word linux and then i had one mechanical hard drive being like a common storage between two platforms from this pc i moved on to fat tiger my linux drive remained the same i only upgraded the windows ssd from SATA 3 to m.2 nvme and then I moved on to Big Mama, you see I used for about like two or three months and uh, the drives were the same. So I just simply moved from the old PC, sold it and installed those drives into the system. I am now sitting with Wolverine, my latest build. Again, I did nothing, only removed old drives from the previous PC, installed into the new one. During this hardware hopping, I often faced uh, issues with the grub and the fix would be very simple that I will just grab myself a live CD, boot into it, move into my Linux environment using chroot command, and then simply update grub or reinstall in some cases, and I was good to go. But with this motherboard, first of all, Windows hijacked BIOS settings as always, which is very normal. Uh, that is, I mean, it will remove all references to your Linux setup, and you will only see Windows as a bootable option. But this time, this motherboard will simply not show Linux drive as a bootable option. And just to make sure I was doing things right, I disabled secure boot, I disabled fast boot, I double checked that all of my disks were GPT, I was booting into UEFI mode with legacy or CSM disabled. And finally, out of desperation, I went on all the way to um, update BIOS. I avoid updating BIOS unless it is absolutely necessary. But in this case, I think it worked. And once I was able to boot into Linux, I faced another issue, which was with the Intel IWL Wi-Fi module. The performance of wireless network on this module is absolutely pathetic. But anyways, let's get into the solutions that how I was able to fix the BIOS uh, problem. So uh, this random guy on Reddit, he told me that sometimes there is uh, uh, there are implementation issues on some motherboards with UEFI system. So no matter you keep reinstalling your grub, the Linux drive will simply not appear as a bootable option. So for that, you need to trick your BIOS to see the Linux drive as a bootable option. And for that, you need to go into live CD, root into your envi Linux environment, and from there, reinstall grub with flag removable, as you see here. And by the way, I found this also in the Linux, uh, Word Linux documentation. I will share the link in the description. So in, if, in case ever in your life you face a situation where the motherboard or the BIOS does not show Linux drive as a bootable device, we need to uh, use this uh, flag. It basically tricks the firmware to assume that your Linux drive is some sort of a lin removable disk and that's why it worked. And by the way, this is not a void issue. So all in all, I was able to, uh, once I did this thing, I was able to boot into Linux and everything was good. The second issue, however, uh, with the wireless driver, I also noticed that the performance of my wireless network is not optimal. Even in the Windows, it was working very bad. And But after a bit of Googling, I figured out that there is an issue with the technology that Intel have is something called AX16 uh, something. But anyways, it begins with AX. And uh, eventually, I was able to point, pinpoint the problem. And the solution is simply to disable uh, this technology in Windows by like uh, right clicking on the adapter settings and going to properties and then unchecking the boxes that talk about AX. In Linux, we need to create a config file on this path, as you can see on my screen. 
and or add all of these options. These are like random options I collected using Google. Fully aware of what these do, but I can make sense of them. For example, this one is about disabling 11N. This one is enabling software encryption. This one is about disabling AX. And uh, this one is about disabling AC. Eventually, I was able to uh, get back online, uh, able to play games. But this is not a solution in my opinion, because it would be at least 70 or 80 Mbps. I mean, see, I don't like to have latest motherboard um, where I have to live with option, disabled options. So it seems that I will be once again hopping my hardware as soon as this baby is sold. All right, so let's cap, uh, recap this video. Uh, the first issue I faced was something to do with the implementation of UEFI on this BIOS. And the fix is simple. You need to reinstall Grub with a flag called removable. And the other problem is with the Intel Wi-Fi chips. This again, it's not a wide issue. I saw this on Manjaro, Arch, Ubuntu Linux. So it's, it's a Linux issue. Or basically, I should say, it's a, it's a vendor driver issue, not the Linux problem. So anyhow, I hope this video helps. And thanks for watching. Bye.